A lot of churches are not having services, and a lot of churches are, are uh, making their two services one service. Uh, some are moving it to another time, and, uh, and, then, and, then, and then New Year's Day, pior. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the word? New Year's Day, worse. Yeah, um, but the plan is, the plan is we'll be here. Um, so if you guys if you guys make it to the 8:30 or the 10 o'clock service this Christmas, great. Uh, if you make it to the New Year's Day 8:30 or 10 o'clock, great. We'll be here. We'll get the year started off right. Good. Any questions? It's going to be a good year. Sounds good. <laughs> The old one will be gone. That's right. All right. Last week we started uh, we started looking at the wise guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Got it. You you've seen this many times on cards, huh? Wise men still seek Jesus. And uh, last week we we said that wise guys uh, still seek him. Wise guys are the are the wise men. Wise guys, wise gals are still seeking the Lord. Last week we looked at, at these wise guys, and we saw that we could be wise guys too. Huh? We saw that we could be, we could be saints who uh, seek after the Savior. We're not even sure that uh, these guys were, were saints, but last week when we looked at these wise guys, uh, we, we talked uh, uh, about them, and uh, what did we really find out? Um, were they Baptists? Probably not. Um, were they astronomers? Looks like. Were they astrologers? Looks like. Is it okay to be an astronomer today? Yes. Is it okay to be an astrologer today? No. It's not okay. What, what, what kind of things does the Bible say about astrology that why, why can't we... Like what, what, what does the Bible say I shouldn't do? Lots of things. Lots of things. <laughs> Regarding astrology... I thought, well, that's going to be pretty restricting. I don't think I want the whole list. <laughs> uh, does, does the Bible say... No, I, I, huh? Does the Bible say anything about reading my horoscope? Do I think it's a good idea for you to mess around with your horoscope? No. no. Uh, does, does the Bible use the word horoscope? I, I don't think it does. Does the Bible say anything about uh, reading stars? Yeah, what's that? Depends on, what <laughs> Depends on what Bible. I think the NIV probably does, huh? Uh, uh, reading cards, uh, cards. Uh, reading uh, entrails, reading, what's that? Yeah, they used to in the Old Testament, they, they often would cut an animal up and read the guts. Yeah, they would read entrails. But you thought I just used the wrong word? I'm a scholar, brother. I better check that out and see, see if I misspoke. Uh, they would read uh, guts. They would read uh, palms, leaves, stuff, throw dice. Shoot, remember the, the, high, the priests used to throw Urim and Thummim. What the heck is that? Joseph Smith, Mormons, said that Urim and Thummim were the glasses that they used. Do I see a child up on the pew? He's loving, he's loving on Greg. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. No, not, you're not the child, Greg. You're fine. <laughs> he's getting a little too comfortable. Whose child is that that looks like his daddy? with four legs and a leash and a <laughs> um, what was that line about oh yeah horoscope so the bible does, i don't think it comes right out and says don't don't mess with your horoscope don't read your horoscope but it's pretty clear about uh, uh, about following the stars about trusting in uh, astrological stuff yeah Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 uh, astrology is kind of thrown in there with neck, neck, ne I always say the wrong one. Neck, necromancy, is that the one where you talk to the dead? Which is the one where you f like fall in love with the dead, huh? Yeah. It's, like witchcraft it's like witchcraft, yeah. Which is the one when you fall in love with a necro, 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 necrophiliac? A necrophiliac, that's not the one that bleeds real bad. That's, that's the one who, a phileophilia, huh? What's that? Well, I'm just trying to be sensitive. Oh. <laughs> it didn't really work. It didn't really work, did it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's gross. 
Yeah, but it's kind of thrown in the same, you're not supposed to. Yeah, you're not supposed to uh, try to talk to the dead. Um, uh, this, is, this is a real sensitive subject. I'm not talking just about for me. We lost mom, what, two weeks ago? And when people have lost loved ones uh, through the years, uh, they would tell me that they would go to the graveside. They would, you know, and they would talk to. Uh, uh, when I was in Bible college, they took us to uh, where a lot of the celebrities and stars are buried. Uh, Forest Lawn, Forest Lawn, was it? We were there, and the funeral director said that often they would they would suggest that family members and friends that they write letters, just kind of get things off your chest, and you know, leave it with the loved one. And uh, I've heard pastors uh, uh, not 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 discourage talking to your loved ones. Um, I've said through the years, maybe not the best idea to talk to your departed loved ones. What, what, is your, what is your position on that? What do you think? I mean, does the Bible say anything about that? The Bible says don't talk to the dead, but that's different, isn't it? When it's someone you love, it's not like I'm trying to read a Ouija board, or is it the same? I mean, we all know people who have. They don't mean anything by it, do they? They, they go to the gravesite. I mean, shoot, Rocky used to go to talk to Adrian. At the, you know, he had a chair up there in the tree. He'd go and sit and read his paper. And Adrian, and, you know. They just talk about the day. We know that the dead have already gone. We know that they're, they're already gone. There's no life there, right? If, 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 if they were followers of Jesus, to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. And if not, then not. But it... And, and that's why, yeah, uh, to, I'm just repeating so that people in Florida can hear you. Uh, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, that's why uh, the Scriptures say that, that uh, uh, precious, uh, happy, happy, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. When a, a, an awful person, a, a murderer, a killer, a, a, an awful, 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 horrible person dies or is executed, uh, uh, God does not rejoice in that, does He? And I guess we're kind of not supposed to. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Why not? God is not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want anyone to die and go to hell. Yeah. Um, God has a few things to say about the dead, but the, when we lose a loved one, the loved one is not there. It was a house. They, they took the tent down, right? So... Um, I, I don't, I, I, uh, I, I, should you? I don't. Um, um, talking to God, uh, God, could you get a message to him? God, could you get a message to her? Uh, it, it, it sounds a little closer to okay, but, you know, um, they know more than you know at this point. Yeah? Um, I don't know if they can read your mind like God can, but uh, can they see you? I don't think so. You don't think so? Then it wouldn't be heaven if they look down, they see what we're going through. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no suffering, no separation. No. Now, let's just take the no more tears in heaven. That doesn't look like that happens until after the kingdom, after the hard stuff, after the... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what they see. I don't know what they experience. Uh, uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, uh, a lot of folks would go to the passage in Hebrews and say, well, there's such a great cloud of witnesses you know, that are, that are, well, if they're witnesses, they're watching us. But there are others who say, and that doesn't mean that they're witnessing what we're doing. It means that they're able to witness to the truth of God's Word. They can testify to the fact that this is, this is God's Word and that salvation is only one way, and that's through the death and the burial and, the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, these wise guys, they were kind of mixed in their, in their beliefs, it, it appears, I mean, we don't know. Uh, it's possible they were Jews. Uh, where did they come from? Tomei? Probably not. Socorro? I, it, it looks like they came from a long, they came from afar, 
afar, I came from afar. But uh, I don't think that far. Uh, if they followed the star, and, and the Bible says they came from the east, right? Um, uh, many believe that they were the same guys that we find in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 4, the, 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 the uh, well, wise men. What, what else were they called? The, uh, um, what else were they called? Wise men? The Magi, yeah. What were they called in Daniel? Huh? In, in the book of Daniel, Daniel was kidnapped, right? And they took him to, to be changed. They gave him a new name and, and they gave him a new diet and they gave him a new everything and to be trained and to be counseled in the ways of the, the Magi, of the wise men, if you remember. Um, and he, he, he learned his lessons relatively well, yeah? In fact, so well that when... Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and he called for all his wise men. They didn't know the answer, but God told Daniel what it was, and God was able to, to use Daniel. Well, Daniel and the Shadrach, Meshach, and Ready to Go, remember those guys had a, a great ministry among the, the Chaldeans, and um, it looks like Nebuchadnezzar at some point became a believer. So it might have been that the influence, the influence, the influence, the influence through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years uh, came down on, uh, to these guys, and, and maybe they were Jews, maybe they were believers, but it looks like they were probably uh, wise guys, uh, Chaldeans, who knew astronomy, knew astrology, and they knew the Bible. Yes, sir? Deuteronomy 19. Or 18. Deuteronomy 18. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So go th go through the list again slowly. Don't sacrifice your kids in the fire. Don't don't kill your kids and sacrifice them. Go ahead. Burn offerings. Practice uh, fornication, sorcery. No sexual immorality. No sorcery. That's witchcraft. Don't uh, interpret omens. That would be reading entrails, reading leaves, Ouija boards, reading the stars. Engaging witchcraft or casting spells. Or uh, witchcraft or casting spells. Or fornication medium. Sexual immorality, again. Or psychic. Uh, uh, is that no sex with psychics? Or was that two separate things? I missed a couple of the words. Mediums or psychics. Okay. So don't call Dionne Warwick. Does she still have the psychic hotline? That was 30 years ago, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, is it okay to call this? Uh, there, I don't think there are. Yeah, there are, as a matter of fact. I saw commercials the other day. Is it okay to call a psychic hotline? Why not? It's only $3, you stingy. You could know the truth. Yes. 45 minutes is free. The first 45. The first 45 seconds is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but don't do it. You're not supposed to do it. But what if they could really tell you stuff? Uh, how could they know? Maybe they're really good at it. Maybe demons tell them. Demons know us pretty well. Yeah, demons know us pretty well. Yeah, I think psychics sometimes can, you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day, you know. Uh, guys can read your fortunes. Guys can tell you stuff. They can, they can you know, they kind of start by, by laying down a, a, a level of... Uh, uh, commonality and trust and you know I can pretty well tell by talking to you a little bit whether I'm on the right track or not you know we're, we're not that hard to figure out um, so does the Bible actually say don't talk to the dead right there it said don't try to conjure up yeah does it say in Matthew not to talk to the dead I don't know. I only hear half of his words, and I make up what I hear from the other half. You can't hear him? What? <laughs> Baby, checking it out back there? I was talking to Eric. Okay, let me know what you find. Okay. These wise guys were really sharp. 
it looks like they were, they, were, they were from the east. It looks like they were from, uh, today it would be Babylon. They would be Iraq, Iran, Persia. Persia was Iraq, Iran, that area. Uh, probably Babylon, yeah, uh, where the Tower of Babel was. A ton of religious stuff happened around there. Uh, I always say that the, the Garden of Eden was right there where Iraq and Iran meet, uh, the, the Tigris and the Euphrates. But even though I say that and I say it with such conviction, we don't know what the planet looked like before the flood. What's under the sea now? What's under the sea now? Garden. The Garden of Eden is under the sea? Yeah, we don't know where it is. Oh, yeah. well, the Bible says that the Garden of Eden was right at the, where the, the Tigris and the Euphrates met. But after the flood, it's kind of hard to believe that the same little Rio Grande would be there the same way after the flood. You know? You kinda, kinda. But it sounds good when you're preaching. Right there where I ran in Iraq, me right there. So we don't know. <laughs> Did you find anything, babe? It says don't inquire of the dead. Don't inquire of the dead. So that's, okay. And I think that's where when we talked about the last time you were talking to your loved ones, the people would say, I'm not asking anything. I'm just talking to them. Yeah. So that's where some people fall into the grave. Yeah. That I'm not, I'm not inquiring, not trying to conjure up, just, ex, just expressing my heart. Yeah? Okay. Hmm. Don't fix me in front of people. It's good to know what the Bible says, yeah? Yeah, it's good to know. Well, what set these wise guys apart from the other religious people? Uh, did they have everything right? I think they probably didn't. I mean, do we have everything right? Well, of course we do. Yeah, like every other church, yeah, we've got it right. Uh, we're still growing, hopefully, yeah, growing in the faith. You, you, you wrestle with, with, uh, with uh, biblical implications. What does the Bible say? Okay, what am I supposed to do about that? Does the Bible actually say, don't do that? Does the Bible actually say, don't do this, don't do that? Um, when you find out what it actually says, then what am I supposed to do about that? Well, these wise guys knew enough about this star and knew enough about uh, 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 the king of the Jews that when they saw the appearance of the star, there must have been some, some God. St I think that star, that star was a supernatural manifestation. I don't think it was a configuration of uh, celestial bodies. That was a word I couldn't find. It was that very simple word. Configuration is just the word that's used for planets being aligned. Is tonight, I understand, a lunar eclipse, the longest night of the year, and uh, I'm going to stay up and watch it. <laughs> Where'd it go? Um, how did I get on the lunar eclipse? Oh, yeah. Whatever the wise guys followed, I don't think it was uh, just a regular something. Like, oh, look. Which is the bright uh, planet, the star that's up there? Venus? Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. Um, and then later in the night, there's another one over there. And then there are four or five big bright ones up there. I don't think it was anything like that. I think it was more like the, 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 the pillar of fire or the pillar of smoke. I think it was something that appeared and something told them, God, somehow, community, hey, now, that one, go, go follow that one. Because if I would have seen that, I would whoa! Where's my phone? But I wouldn't have. Hey, babe, I'll see you next year. I'm going to go follow that star. But something made them follow that thing, yeah? And they went, and they traveled a long way. And then when it stopped, they stopped. Well, usually stars don't stop. They just, until they disappear, they just walked until it went over the horizon. And No, no, I think, I think it appeared and led them and stopped. And it stopped over the baby. And they found Jesus in the manger. Is that right? Is that what we found last week? Ooh, that was a trick question. No, in the house, right? So maybe he was a couple of years old by that point. Um, how many of them were there? We don't know. Uh, more than one? Yeah, because it's men. More than one. Uh, more than two, does it say? However many were there was enough to freak Herod out. Herod had an army. Uh, a lot of his guys, I, I understand, were kind of scattered about that point, but it, it, it scared him a little bit. So it's probably more than two dudes, probably more than three, probably more than just three guys with a 
you know, a Walmart bag with three little presents. You know, it was probably a, a big deal. Well, what really set these wise guys apart from the other religious people? We saw last week the Magi had seeking hearts. Yeah, they, they, they saw the star and they wanted to go. They weren't just curious. They, they were committed to, to following this star to find the king of the Jews. Well, they understood. They not only had seeking hearts, but they had studied minds. They had read the Bible. No doubt they were reading other religious books at the time, but they read the Bible and they understood enough to know that something big was going to happen. So they weren't just curious, seeking, but they were studied. And then they were sacrificial in their spirit. They not only were, were reaching for God's stuff and looking for God's stuff, they were responding to God's stuff. And they were willing to give of themselves or, or, or carry these gifts. Um, and I asked last week, well, just like the wise guys, do we have seeking hearts? Uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, 13, you will seek me and you will find me when? When you search for me with your whole heart, with all your heart. Do we have studied minds? Timothy says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Is that just for preachers? He was talking to a preacher, but no, that's for everybody. God wants us to be able to read God's Word and understand God's Word and do God's Word. So I asked, do we chew on God's Word? Uh, that's, that's another word for meditate. Do you, do you take God's Word in and let it rattle around in your soul, your spirit, your brain, your head, your heart? Do you let it rattle around in there? Do you let it change your behavior? Do you let it change your belief? Um, if we are studied... That's what it would mean. It would mean that you would let God's Word in, let it change you, and then let it back out. And then do we have sacrificial spirits? Romans 1.12, I think that's supposed to be 12.1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. I think that should be Romans 12.1. Uh, what are we doing with our talent? What are we doing with our time? What are we doing with our treasures? Guess what I think we ought to be doing? It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. But we should care what God thinks, right? We should care what God thinks about what we can do with our time. And, 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 and we, we can choose. You know, it's one thing for me to say, choose right, or God's going to get you. I don't say it like that. But, you know, but you can choose. You can choose to do whatever the heck you want to do with your talent your skills. And, and you do. We do. You can choose to do whatever you want to do with your time. You can choose to do whatever you want to do with your money. God gives us the privilege of, of, of having that sacrificial spirit just like the other wise guys. Okay, so that brings us to this week. These wise guys set themselves apart for God. We could set ourselves apart for God and be wise guys too. We could. There should be a word set in there. We could set ourselves apart for God and be wise guys too. All right, I'm going to let you in on three, three more distinctions, okay? This is going to be pretty fast. Three more distinctions of a wise guy, of a wise man, of a, of a wise guy or a wise gal, someone that we could be, if we choose to, to do with our time and our treasure and our talents uh, the way the wise guys uh, did, let me in, let you in on three more distinctions, okay? One, first of all, the, a, a wise person, a person who's, who's, uh, who's really trying to reach for God's stuff, a wise guy won't wait to trip over the truth. You won't wait to trip over it. You won't, you won't just kind of stumble around through life. I won't just, just wait for God to reveal stuff to me. A wise guy won't wait to trip over the truth. Verse 1, uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, and they asked, Where is the one who's been born the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. It's kind of a simple thing to say, but they didn't wait to trip over the truth. They, they, they went out of their way. They were seeking uh, so that in, in, uh, in a situation like this, it's one thing for me to be throwing information at you. It's another thing for you to be reaching. It's one thing for me to be preaching. It's another thing for you to be listening. Uh, what, do we, wh wh what is our goal when we come in? Just to make it, <laughs> just to get through it, or, or to learn, or to, or to be changed, or to be challenged. We probably all kind of have different goals. We all probably have different agendas, maybe kind of close because we're all here right now, but, but, 
but we probably all aren't seeing a Wednesday night the same way. I mean, you certainly are looking at a Wednesday night in a way that's different from the people who could be here and chose not to come here. And you're looking at Wednesday night different from the people who come on Sunday mornings and, and can't or, or choose not to come. You're just looking at it differently. There are people who are watching online and people who could watch online and choose not to. There are people who are watching online now, live, hey, and people who will watch later. They may be looking for the same things. They may be looking for different things, but a wise guy won't wait to trip over the truth. To, to put ourselves in that category, we want to be reaching. We want to be seeking. These guys did. A wise guy won't wait to trip over the truth. He'll go out of his way to find it. I think you guys kind of fit in that category. Kind of more like sort of. Two, a wise guy will not only uh, won't wait to trip over the truth, but a wise guy won't try to suppress the truth. That kind of goes without saying, I think. I mean, can you imagine anyone knowing the truth and, and not wanting it out? To have the truth and to decide to hide the truth. I mean, what, what could that possibly be? I mean, it could be anything, but... Um, I was reading this afternoon uh, job interviews, uh, what, what a good manager is like, what a good employee is like. And, um, a, a person who, who uh, is taking in a bunch of resumes and, and talking to a bunch of people, um, when you're listening to someone uh, trying out for a job, yeah, are, are they auditioning? Are they, are they presenting themselves factually? Are they putting a spin on who they are? For example, if I'm uh, um, um, obsessive, I obsess over things, do I want to tell a prospective boss I'm obsessive or do I want to tell him I, I focus on detail? <laughs> you know? Do you want to tell somebody that, uh, that, that you're aggressive or do you want to let them know that you're assertive and you can get the job done? You know, are you lying? Are you spinning the truth? You know, is it, is, it, is it that we just don't, don't want everybody to know everything there is to know about us? Yes. You know, I mean, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> Maybe we can't handle the truth. A wise guy, a wise person, I'm not saying that that person just spills all their guts and tells everybody everything there is to say. I, I think only a fool reveals the whole counsel of his heart. But a wise person, when he finds the truth, won't try to suppress it. Won't try to hold it back. If there are people that you love, you want them to know as well. Verse 3, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed when he heard that there was a king of the Jews. And all Jerusalem was disturbed with him. When he had called together, I think they were more disturbed that the king was disturbed because uh, th he was a violent guy. King Herod had killed off some of his wives. He killed off some of his kids. He, killed, he was like uh, Kim Jong-un. Is that the kid in North Korea? Killing off uncles, killing off relatives. They haven't seen his wife, I think, in six months. For reals. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you don't like somebody, you just... Bye-bye. <sighs> he was a violent, crazy person. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. Freaked Jerusalem out, too. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked the religious guys, he asked the preachers, what about this Messiah? who's to be born. They knew enough of the Bible to say, oh yeah, in Bethlehem and Judea. Yeah, we know this. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Where is this from? Uh, Micah, I think. Then Herod called the Magi. After he talked to the preachers, and they said, oh yeah, yeah, Bethlehem, there's supposed to be a king of the Jews, uh, someone who will be a ruler and will shepherd all of the nation of Israel. Herod called these wise guys then, these magi, he called them secretly, and he found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, and he said, go and search carefully for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, because I want to go worship him as well. Now, we know that that's not the truth, right? He wanted to go kill the kid, right? Um, a wise person, the magi, had the truth. The preachers, the teachers of the law, they had the truth. Herod now had the truth. The Magi kept seeking and reaching. The preachers, the Jews, the, the, high, the priests, nah. And Herod, he's going to use that 
and he's going to keep people from the truth. If anything, he should have said, hey, the king of the Jews is over there. Let's go check it out. Let's go. Let's go and get buses together and shuttles and let's go take them. But he didn't do that. Uh, he suppressed the truth. The preachers ignored the truth. The wise guys went after the truth. A wise guy won't try to suppress the truth. He'll bend his life around it. Uh, that's a concern for a pastor. Um, it, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a dangerous thing for people to hear the truth and ignore it. It's a way dangerous thing for people to know the truth and try to hide it. A wise person will take the truth and not try to twist it to fit what they already believe. A wise person will bend their own life around the truth, right? That's what these guys did. A wise guy won't try to suppress the truth like Herod or ignore the truth like the preachers. He'll bend his life around it. He'll take it in, let it rattle around, change him, and then let it back up. Three, a wise guy won't just acknowledge the truth. Um, the preachers acknowledge the truth. Herod acknowledged the truth. Uh, you know because he did something about it. He just did a bad thing about it. The wise guys didn't just acknowledge the truth. Verse 9, after they had heard the king, they went on their way. <coughs> and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them. So they're following the star and then the star stopped, right? They had to go ask. And then now that, oh, Bethlehem, and then boop, the star. Why, why didn't you show up before I had to ask that king? Herod, but the star appeared again, and it went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Uh, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. They rejoiced. Verse 11, on coming to the house, not the manger now, not the barn, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshiped him. And then they opened their treasures, and they presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Uh, a wise guy won't just acknowledge the truth. He'll do something about it. Yeah? It, if we want to be wise guys like the other wise guys, that's a distinctive that, that's important to remember. Uh, when, we, when, we, when we reach for the truth and when you receive the truth, uh, let it do something in you. Do something about it. A wise guy won't wait to trip over the truth. He'll go out of his way to find it. A wise guy won't try to suppress the truth. He'll bend his life around it. And a wise guy won't just acknowledge the truth. He'll do something about it. So I think kind of a dumb question, would we have been wise enough to follow the star? I mean, I told you what I would have done. I don't think I would have said, hey, Martha, what's your name? Babe? I'll see you in a couple of years. I'm going to follow that star or whatever the wise guy said. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a pretty big deal. Um, how, did, how did they know to do that? I, I, I don't know. There, there are a lot of, there, there's still a lot of, unanswered questions with the, with the Magi, with this story. But would we have been wise enough to follow the star? James asks this question, or, or James lays it out like this in the Bible. When you, when you hear the word, don't just listen to it and so deceive yourselves. That, that's, that I think that's big to hang on to just right there. Uh, people are in churches like this all the time, and they hear the truth. How can you hear the truth and deceive yourself? Well, if you don't do what it says, you're deceiving yourself. It's a dangerous position to know the truth and ignore it. It's a dangerous position to be in to, to have the truth and try to suppress it. It's a dangerous, dangerous place. Your heart can get hard. Your heart can get hard. Uh, the extreme, Romans chapter 1, you get a reprobate heart, a heart that doesn't even care anymore. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And then God may say, you know what? Get out of the pool. It's time. It's okay. Come on. Um, it, it, it may be a sin. Uh, is it, uh, who talks, John talks about a sin unto death. Yeah? There's a sin unto death. I don't think it's a specific sin or a specific number of sins. Or, you know, once you fill up the bucket, oh, sin, you're in trouble. I don't think it's a specific sin. Uh, I don't think it's a number of sins. I, I think it's just finally a line that you cross with the Lord when He says, you know what, you're, you're a believer and you know, it's kind of hard to tell right now. It's a sin unto death. Uh, I mean, it, it's a sin. It's not just a, you're not pleasing to me. You're not, you're not hitting the mark. You're not doing enough. It's not that. It's, it is a sin that 
causes you to cross the line. But I think, I think there are attitudes that we build up. Uh, our actions flow out of our attitudes. Our behavior comes out of our belief. Your belief comes out of your Bible. And I think your Bible is a Bible. For a, most of the people out there in the world, their Bible is them. It's whatever pops into their head. It's whatever works for them. It's whatever they want. So don't merely listen to the Bible. You're going to deceive yourselves. Do what the Bible says. Anyone who listens to the Word but doesn't do what the Bible says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, he goes away immediately and forgets what he looks like. Now, I do that. That's not a bad thing. What he's actually talking about is you get up in the morning and you go to the mirror and you think you're all like Fonzie. Anybody old enough remember the Fonz? You know, you pull out your cup and you, hey, and you know, you don't do anything. You think you're great. Uh, God says, no. When you look at yourself in the mirror, and you remember what the mirror is? It's this. When you look into the perfect law of the Lord, when you look at this, when you look at yourself in the light of this, I think you look great, but he says, you don't look so good. Yeah? You look at yourself in this light. Comb your hair. Wash your face. You know? I mean, any barn looks a little better with a little paint, you know? But he's not saying fake it. He's not saying just, just change the way you look on the outside. He's saying change the way you are on the inside. Make sure you do what it says. Don't look at yourself in the mirror, the Bible, and not change anything. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 7. Remember, not every religious person is going to get into heaven. Remember, not everybody who knows Bible verses is going to get into heaven. Not every preacher is going to get into heaven. Not every miracle worker is going to get into heaven. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day of judgment, but Lord, Lord, didn't we preach in your name? In your name, didn't we drive out demons? Now, they're not trying to pull a fast one on Jesus. They're, gonna, they're not going to lie to the Lord. They actually did these things. I mean, they, people who stand before the Lord in judgment, some of them will actually be able to say, I preached in your name. You know what that means? These are pastors. These are preachers. I, I cast out devils in your name. Not the fakey stuff that I show on, you know, on the screen once in a while. These guys evidently did stuff. They did miraculous stuff. Many will say to me on that day of judgment, Lord, didn't we preach in your name? In your name, didn't we drive out demons? In your name, didn't we perform many miracles? And the Lord says, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. It doesn't have anything to do with knowing a lot of Bible. It doesn't have anything to do with being able to preach the word. It doesn't have anything to do with casting out devils or performing miracles. Away from me, you evildoer. So, Jesus says, along the same line of what James said, along the same line of what we saw the Magi doing, anyone who hears these words of mine and then puts them into practice, that's a wise man. That's a wise guy. Hear God's word and heed God's word. Listen to it. Learn from it. Do what he says. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rains will come down. The streams will rise, the winds will blow and beat against the house. But the house on the rock stood firm. Huh? But everyone, verse 26, who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. Huh? Foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came down and the floods came up. Rains came down and the floods came up. Rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand went <laughs> splat. <laughs> I don't remember the rest of the song. By then, whenever I used to sing that with the kids, we'd all jump up and fall down. So I never knew what the word was. But it doesn't stand, Jesus said. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. What do you think the, we, the, 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 the wind and the... And the streams and the, it's life it's life it's it's hurt it's it's lack it's discouragement it's depression it's everything that satan can throw at you satan can't stop you 
Lauren pointed out last week. Satan cannot stop you. He can't. And he's not the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's a whole other sermon. That's religion. But he can't stop you. But he can throw up enough, enough, uh, enough doubt, enough discouragement. He can disillusion you, throw out enough depression. And then who decides to quit serving the Lord? We do. He can't stop you. It's too hard. It's too hard, so we quit. I don't want to deal with all that blah, 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 blah from the family, so I'll just quit. I don't want to hear the blah, 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 blah from the boss. I'll just shut up. I don't want to hear the blah, 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 blah from my conscience. I'll just suppress the truth. People, people, people deal with the truth in different ways. You don't want to be like that. You, you want to be the wise man who takes the Word of God and, and do what it says. Don't let anything, don't let anyone stop you from living out the truth, from doing God's Word. We're going to do it different ways, but you're not going to stand before the Lord and give an account for my life. You're going to stand before the Lord and give an account for your life. And you can stand before the Lord with confidence. You can. The Bible says you can. You can stand before the Lord and not be ashamed. It's kind of a stretch for my little mind, but the Bible says it's possible to stand before the Lord unashamed. It's possible to stand before the Lord with confidence. But I don't think we're going to be able to stand before the Lord with confidence or unashamed if we're not taking God's Word in and we're not letting God's Word out. It's got to change us. It's got to come in. It's got to rattle around. It's got to make the changes. You got to chew on it. You got to think about it. And then God makes the changes. You really have to be a follower of Jesus. You, you, I mean, it doesn't, I don't see any other way. Uh, praying a prayer, doing the blue book, you know, all those things are good, but it kind of seems to me like that's kind of like the first step. You know, that's kind of like the, it's not like you have to get saved in steps, but praying a prayer isn't necessarily going to get you in. If praying a prayer was your absolute and total surrender to Jesus Christ, to be a follower of Jesus, then yes. Uh, how much did the, did, the, did the thief on the cross, what was he able to accomplish for the Lord? Eh, not a whole lot. It's not a matter of how much did he get to do for the Lord. But in his heart of hearts, man, when he prayed the prayer, his prayer was pretty simple, wasn't it? Lord, remember me. Boy, he acknowledged him. He recognized Jesus for who he was. Please remember me when you come into your kingdom. Pretty good. Uh, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Couldn't get baptized, couldn't join a church, couldn't be good. But he recognized Jesus Christ and he became a follower right then. That's what God wants us to do. And he wants us to not suppress the truth. We still have people in our families who don't know the Lord. I don't know what you can say that you haven't already said. I don't know what you can pray that you haven't already prayed. You know, you can't browbeat them into heaven. I've tried. You can't shame them into heaven. You can't guilt them into heaven. What are you going to do? I don't know. You just, what are you going to do? You just keep begging God. Yeah. I don't know if that sounds very spiritual, but what are you going to do? God is sovereign and God chooses whom he chooses to save. And God convicts those whom he chooses to convict. God, please save our families. huh? God, please save our friends. God, please save our boss, our employees, our our buddies, God, please save my neighbors. God, please save my, and you fill in the blank. What does it take for them to hear what you heard? When somebody said, hey, you can have your sins forgiven. I wanted that so bad. I just didn't want to be like Carl. <laughs> I wanted to get saved so bad, but I didn't want to be like y'all, church people. I wanted to get saved so bad, but I didn't want to be deceived into leaving one religion for another religion. And I agonized. I struggled. Not for the full eight months, but those last few months were miserable. The last few months before I got saved were miserable. I agonized. What if this is the truth? What if I'm really going to die and go to hell just because I don't say Jesus come into my heart and save me? I mean, I didn't know. It's just basically what Carl was saying. What if I really am going to die and go to hell just because I don't get saved? Whatever the heck Carl means by get saved. And I was in agony. I wrestled with it every day. I wrestled with it all during the day. I wrestled with it at night. 
I wrestled with it at work. I wrestled with it on my days off. It wasn't just a, yeah, I'd think about it once in a while. I agonized over this proposition that the Bible might actually be God's Word. It might actually be God's words communicating to me. I wasn't saved yet. But for me, that was the starting point. Who am I supposed to listen to? Carl? I don't trust him. He's crazy. His preacher? I've never met him and I don't like him. Who am I supposed to trust? I don't trust anybody in my church. I mean, I had family and friends in my church. I, it's not that I, I thought they were lying to me. I just, I realized that it was inadequate. But only God can point out to you that your religion isn't good enough. You know? At some point you realize, wow, this, this ain't cutting it. Not because it's not satisfying, but because God breaks through. What does it take to God for God to break through into the hearts of the people that we care about? How do you make God save somebody? You can't. So I beg. I beg God, please, please save them. God, please break through. God, please talk to them the way you talked to them. I've never heard his voice, but God, please reach into their soul, their spirit, their head, their heart, whatever the heck you do. Get in there and persuade them that they are a sinner and they can be saved if they'll turn to you and follow you. What choice do we have? You can tell them we pray because at some point they're going to stand before Jesus is just like we are and wow we're in I hope <laughs> you know I still wrestle with it well that's a heck of a thing to hear from your preacher I still boy am, am I saved I've known a lot of people in a position like this who were sure they were saved and then doggone they come forward during an invitation during an altar call and say you know I, I never ever had given my life to Jesus Christ. They'd been saved. They were deacons. They were pastors. They, they made a, a, a full-out surrender to Jesus Christ, got saved, got baptized again. And you think, whoa, whoa. You know, it ought to make you stop and wonder. I'm not trying to get you to doubt your salvation. I'm just saying, this is too big. This is way too big to just lay it out and say, yeah, I, I prayed. I prayed a prayer. Is our life different? Are you really following Jesus? Praying a prayer, that's the door in. Yeah. But if you really entered into this relationship with Jesus Christ, it's really going to make a difference in our lives. The rains come down against this house that's built on sand, and everything falls apart to the point where Jesus said, I never knew you. I don't know who you are. How can Jesus, how can God not know you? What he's saying is, I never had a saving relationship with you. And I don't want that for you. And if you're really saved, you, I think you really will get it. And you'll understand that people in your family, people in your world who haven't given their heart to Jesus, they don't get it. And how can, you go, how can we go to sleep at night and not be concerned about that? How can we live our day? How can we go about our lives and not care about that? A wise guy won't wait to trip over the truth. You know I'm not trying to guilt you into anything. I, I'm, I'm just trying to help a brother out. You know, I'm doing for you what I would appreciate you doing for me. Pray for me. I'm praying for you. Pray that we, we see the truth. And it's not just a... Man, how many people who prayed at Billy Graham crusades never got saved? Nah, not because of Billy Graham. Shoot, I, I got saved in an independent fundamental Baptist church. Glory. And our kind of church was like, just get them to pray this prayer. Just get them to pray this prayer. Get them to pray this prayer and trust God with the rest. That sounds pretty good. But monkeys don't get saved. Parents don't get saved. Just because they say, Jesus, come into my heart. They're not getting saved. You can teach a monkey how to peck out the, salve, the, 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 the sinner's prayer on a keyboard. And they're not getting saved. What does it take to break through? I don't know. It takes God. And I'm praying, I'm praying for you, and I hope you're praying for me. God, change us. I mean, make it, make it so that these guys really get it. And then, God, 
use us to reach the next guys. And, and then God use us to reach the next guys. Who is that? I don't know. Whoever God prepares. Because most people are going to ignore you. Most people won't hear you. But maybe at some point, Tia Lupita will. <laughs> She's not here to defend herself. At some point, your cousin will hear. At some point, your dad, your mom, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your neighbor, your enemy, your, your boss, your whoever. At some point, boy, you trust that, that God will just break through. I want us to be wise guys. And a wise guy won't wait to trip over the truth. He'll go out of his way to find it. And a wise guy won't try to suppress the truth. He'll bend his life around it. And a wise guy won't just acknowledge the truth. He'll do something about it. Would we have been wise enough to follow the star? I don't know. Yeah, if God kicked us in the behind and said, go follow that star, I guess. Would we have been wise enough to find the Savior? The, 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 the priests missed Him. Herod missed Him. He's right there. The priests were five miles away and they missed Him. How far is five miles? Here to not even central. What's five miles away? Las Lunas? I don't know. Not, that's too far. What's five miles away? <laughs> five miles isn't very far. Yeah. The big eye? Oh, no, that's 50 miles. No, I mean, if you're looking at 25, you yeah. Bravo, oh. Oh, okay. But I have to get to I 25. Don't scare me like that. Yeah, five miles is not far, though, is it? Is the point. They could have found him. Would we have been wise enough to find the Savior? Will we listen when he tells us? To get saved? Will we listen when He tells us to follow Him in obedience? Will we listen to the Lord when He says, get serious for me? Uh, that, that's what I'm praying for you, that we'll be able to get serious for the Lord. Nah, I mean, I can give you a big old list, but God knows what He wants from you. I, he knew what He wanted from the thief on the cross. It wasn't a whole lot. Uh, he knew what He wanted from the Apostle Paul. A lot. What does he want from you? I don't know. I hope more than he wants from me. But he wants us to be his. Lord, we want to be yours. We don't want to hear, I never knew you. We don't want to be embarrassed when we stand before you. We, we would love to be able to stand before you with confidence. Uh, but God, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We, we, live, we live such, uh, well, we're living our lives. And some of us may feel like, wow, we're really, really giving up a bunch, like, like Peter thought in the Bible. We're really giving up a lot for you, Lord. And then there are others of us who realize we're not, we're not sacrificing anything for you. And some of us are still kind of scratching our heads. God, what do you want? What do you want from us? What do you want from me? Lord, I pray that you would turn us into these wise guys, these wise gals, these wise people, these wise men who, who seek truth, who will reach for truth, who will accept the truth, who will bend their lives around the truth. Jesus, save us, change us, use us, so that when we stand before you, we can hear you say, good job, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you for loving us first, Jesus. Thank you that we can love you back. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. So again, Christmas Day, we'll be here 8.30 and 10 o'clock. If you can come, come on. And uh, New Year's Day, we'll have services as well. So if you can come, come on. If you can't, come on. <laughs>